Welcome to another Working Bull Terriers episode. As you already know, when it comes to Bull Terriers, we are the best. And on this video, we will offer tips on training and exercising your Bull Terrier. Can you skip training your Bull Terrier? No. Can you skip exercising your Bull Terrier? No. Because both training and exercise are very important for your Bull Terrier's mental and physical health. Remember to like and subscribe and remember to leave comments with your questions and we will create videos for your answers. Thank you. How to exercise your Bull Terrier and any other dog. Exercise is physical activity that is done with the intention of improving or maintaining physical fitness and overall health. Exercise helps increase strength, flexibility, cardiovascular endurance and overall physical and mental health. The goal is to improve the physical condition and health of the dog. A relaxed 20-minute walk is not enough to benefit a dog's physical condition. Lack of exercise is the number one cause of unwanted behavior and health issues in dogs. Exercise also benefits the relationship between dog and dog owner. Doing something enjoyable with your dog and trying new things together strengthens the bond between dog and dog owner. In order to get the maximum benefits out of an exercise program, it has to be whole, as whole as possible. This means it has to contain endurance training, resistance training, and balance and coordination training. Remember that the dog's physical condition should always be taken into consideration before starting any form of exercise. Endurance training to improve and maintain good cardiovascular function and health. Resistance training to strengthen the dog's muscular system. It is important for the protection of the joints. When muscles are strong, they provide better support for the joints, reducing the stress and strain during physical activity. Balance and coordination training will improve a dog's ability to control their body, their balance and coordination. The dog will be able to perform physical tasks more efficiently and effectively. Balance and coordination training also offers mental stimulation for dogs as they learn new skills and engage in challenging activities. The approach to creating an exercise program is to create blocks. This means emphasizing on a specific type of exercise for a specific period of time. For example, emphasize on resistance training for a month. On a following block, Emphasize on balance and coordination training. Any and every training block must include some form of cardio. Optimal heart function is very important, so cardio is included in all training blocks. Before we suggest exercise you can include in your training plan, we will refer to the basic training rules. Always follow these rules to avoid injury and make the best out of your training plan. Warm up for 5 to 10 minutes before exercise begins. Cool down for 5 to 10 minutes at the end of every training session. Choose activities the dog enjoys. Every training plan should be customized to the specific needs and physical condition of the specific dog. Gradually increase the duration and intensity of the exercise. Every week has two recovery days. Depending on the dog's physical condition and exercising plan, this may vary and more days may be needed. Stretching exercises are necessary two or three days per week depending on the intensity and frequency of the exercise. Please note that the exercises we suggest are for adult dogs in good health condition. 
Before starting a new exercising program, we recommend that you always consult with your vet to confirm your dog's health condition is up to it. Endurance training is split in two categories, slow steady cardio and high intensity interval. For the first category, you can choose any of the following, swimming, walking and running. The goal is for the exercise to last more than 20 minutes and gradually increase duration in analogy to the dog's improving endurance. For the second category, high intensity interval training, the most popular exercises you can use in your plan is to play fetch or flirt ball. Depending on your dog's physical condition, the duration varies from 5 to 20 minutes. If your dog's condition permits it, you can play fetch on a slope to increase difficulty. Resistance exercises you can easily use are tug of war and weight pulling. For tug of war, the dogs must be trained in basic obedience and know the out command. For weight pulling, you will need a weight pulling harness and for weight, you can use a tire or a backpack with some weight inside. For balance and coordination training, you can join an agility club or work with what you have available. For example, a fallen tree log in the woods can be used for balance exercise. You can even make simple obstacles yourself using wooden planks. When exercising your dog, remember to always follow the aforementioned rules and train to the dog's capacity with safety. Remember to like and subscribe for more. How to train your Bull Terrier The Bull Terrier idiosyncrasy sometimes makes training them seem difficult or even impossible. Many Bull Terrier owners think it is impossible to train a Bull Terrier. But none of this is true. Bull Terriers are excellent trainees. We have proved this with our own Bull Terriers, our own line trainees and those who have come to train with us in person. Follow the training tips we will give you and they will make training your Bull Terrier and achieving your goals so much easier. Tip number one. Do not try to impose your opinion on a Bull Terrier. This has never worked and it never will. Tip number two. Do not persist. Bull Terriers are masters of persistence and that will not change. If for any reason the Bull Terrier does not understand or perform a command, do not insist. Work some other command and when the time is right, the dog will perform. Tip number three. Never and for no reason use prong and choke collars. Using these tools with a Bull Terrier will have the complete opposite outcome of the desired one. Tip number four. Before starting to teach commands, work on engagement with your dog. Reward eye contact every time. Reward when the dog looks at you during a walk. Play interactive games like tag of war and fetch with your dog to empower your bond. In order for the dog to concentrate on you and what you are teaching, you have to be interesting enough for the dog. Tip number five. If your dog has a low food or prey drive, first spend time building the food and prey drive and then move on to teaching commands. Treats and maybe a ball or tag are the main rewards for the dog. Therefore, the higher the drives, the easier it becomes to motivate the dog and get him to cooperate. Tip number six. Keep your training sessions short to prevent the dog from getting bored. Always start your training sessions with commands that are easy to understand or the dog already knows. Always end your training sessions with a successful performance of a command the dog knows. In case the dog does not know any commands yet, end your training sessions with a brief game or walk. 
Tip number seven. In case the dog looks bored, accelerate. Move quicker, reward quicker, turn reward into a mini event. Move faster from one command to another, avoid staying in one place for too long and frequently change position. If your dog is too enthusiastic, jumps on you in a hurry to get the reward and stays on command no more than a few seconds, slow down. Move only as much as you need to. Reward in a moderate manner. Do not appear or sound enthusiastic. Tip number eight. Be consistent about your training. Devote a small amount of time to train your dog every day. If you train a little every day, you will have results sooner. Tip number nine. Start training with a clicker and when you have reached a good level, then you can use verbal markers. Tip number 10. Use trees for reward and when you have reached a satisfactory level, gradually start using a ball or tag for reward. Wishing you successful and enjoyable training sessions. Remember to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.